Hello viewers and welcome to a bit of coverage of Burnout Paradise on Nintendo Switch. A game that came out, well conversion should I say, that came out a couple of weeks ago. We were just caught up on a few things and now I'm catching up on some bits and pieces. This is a very brief video today. I'm going to come back at this at a later date. Just looking at Switch racing games in general, of which there are a few. And I just wanted to show you the biking action first. Because I really do enjoy riding around on the bikes. They're a bit crazy. Uh, but they're a lot of fun and they go super fast and it reminds me of something about I don't know what makes bike games more fun sometimes uh, I like to show a little bit of footage random footage of the uh, switch playing it you know I always try and remind ourselves when we're watching a, a, a video on YouTube this is a handheld game running all that detail 60 frames per second good to see and what it shows you is what the switch is capable of uh, and I still find it amazing that a handheld can do this kind of quality, even today, you know, and it shows when, when a switch is in the right hands, it doesn't need to chug along at 20 to 30 FPS with wobbly textures, you know, it can look a bit better. Uh, I will say this uh, first impressions though, is the uh, switch, uh, the, when, it, when it's in handheld mode, I do find that the resolution's a bit low on distant objects and that really affects obviously seeing to the distance at high speed so it's a little bit tricky i kind of wish they could find a way to work on the anti-aliasing or the resolution in some way just to improve the lods uh, in those distant objects because they are in the handheld mode uh, a little bit difficult to make out of course i like fast cars and there's loads and loads of cars in this version and you can go in a formula one car as well so we have i believe this is a 2008 mclaren uh, racing round super high speed smashing bashing action and lots of it going on there as well i enjoyed this car for me faster the cars the better that's what this is all about it's about fast action and i enjoyed racing around in this and i on this version here i've, I've unlocked uh, i've got unlocked all the cars uh, i don't know if it is unlocked for everyone i'm assuming it is at the moment uh, but i'll be working my way through a bit of the career and just discovering more and more of the city and sort of reminding myself of it again. Uh, first you have an intro, you've got to sign in rather awkwardly to an EA account structure which is a bit clunky when you first get hold of the game but you only need to do it once and then you're in and of course then you uh, find the intro that tells you all about Paradise City and what it's all about. Now I did find that the intro was very reminiscent of Rage Racer so I'm just going to let you have a listen for just a moment. From the winding trails of White Mountain to the grid network of downtown Paradise. The city has miles of open road. Rage Racer. The deep, primitive, roaring exhaust notes tidbit. The base instincts of those who become known as Rage Racers. This is unlike any driving experience you've ever had. No one knows how the race started, or how the contestants became known as Rage Racers. So there you have it, uh, a bit of Rage Racer, which sounded better, by the way, it had a bit of music to it, it sounded more serious, more punchy, uh, but it, it's, you can tell it's sort of inspired by that kind of vibe and tone in explaining the city. Now, uh, Burnout Paradise was an open map, open world uh, environment. Uh, it, it was ambitious, graphically, you know, really polished for its time. Uh, moving on from Burnout 3, that was probably my favourite Burnouts were 1 and 3 in particular. I quite like the enclosed racing and racing environments, especially multiplayer. When it worked, I loved the multiplayer on Burnout 3. Loved it. So it's some of the best multiplayer I've ever had on a racing game. Not quite Driver San Francisco, but on the way there. And it was very good indeed. So I really liked that. When they went to this sort of open world, I wasn't as keen on it you're still doing the same sort of things you do in any open world game really drive here do a race drive there do a race do a bashing session of something take on a driver uh, the only difference with burnout paradise is i do find that map knowledge matters a lot otherwise that happens there and uh, it's where you're trying to look at the map roughly where you've got to go it's not as easy as some other systems that have a massive arrow on top of you 
you really do need to look at the street and where you've got to be and what's the best route to get there and if you know the map then you can walk through the game and if you don't there is a lot of trial and error of looking at the map and crashing and going the wrong way and constantly not being able to make your target so I think in this case I went the wrong way didn't know where I was going and I thought oh, it's quite frustrating for me now I'm, I'm losing my patience with it. I'm just literally falling off all the time but it, it's just a, you don't know where you're going um, when you know the map now, a good example is actually Need for Speed Most Wanted. Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005, that is, the good one. Uh, it, it, it was funny, you know, you had that sort of Camden area and all that. And I actually became, I said I could become a cab driver by the time uh, I finished that game. I knew that city inside out. When I had problems with cops, no problem. And I just could race those roads. I knew those roads so well. You know, I knew roughly where the lines I could take to avoid traffic on key apexes, stuff like that. And good areas where I could do dodge cops officially and unofficially being underground car parks or a bit where you could fall off a couple of jumps. It'll be the same here. You'll be learning about the environments and how best to uh, take on those environments and race from A to B. And there's loads to do. So, you know, for, for one, I'm happy to see this game released on Nintendo Switch technically it's a good conversion it's all running really well as one would expect it should but also being a handheld this is fantastic you know it just adds to the driving roster a lot of fun to be had with this and multiplayer lots of bashing crashing action you'd expect from burnout and it's something that you know what you're going to get you know you're going to get a lot of takedown action you see particles look everything it shows it's not it's only using a fraction of the detail that modern games use Yet when artistic elements are used in the right way, it looks like it looks so much more polished. It looks like there's so much more going on. This is why quite often I talk to developers about artistic approach rather than just how many polygons can we run on the screen? You know, how can we use those, those effects better to create something? And this is where frame rate can be used, as I say, for 60 frames per second on Nintendo Switch. It's capable, make the games for it, do it right. Don't rush it out the door. Care about your products. And in this sense, EA have done a, a decent job, though I would like to see some improvements to the resolution. I don't suppose that'll ever happen, but certainly seeing some distance on the handheld could be a bit better. But a classic game, we welcome it back on Nintendo Switch, and we look forward to playing a bit more in the future, and I'll be comparing a bit more in the way of nin Nintendo Switch racing games. But a um, bit of a ramble today, a bit of a brief one, and we will come back to it, and there'll be more from me very soon. Hello viewers, well thanks for watching the video today, do like and subscribe, it supports what we do. Do become a YouTube member, YouTube Patreon supports all of our content you see on the channel and of course lots of gaming from retro to modern games, I love it all in terms of racing action. So click on one of the two videos just there to find out more.